Hey, how's it going? I see we got a couple people coming in. Sorry I'm a little late, y'all. Um, I had to go in and wash my face. And I'm changing bandages. We're going to wait just a little while to get a few people in here. If you can go ahead and like this live, go ahead and share it. Um, and you can go ahead and start commenting with your questions or if you want to send them to my inbox. I already have a bunch of questions that some people have asked me for or asked me earlier today and earlier in the week. Uh, so we're going to get right to it in just a second. trying to get as many people in here as possible so I can go ahead and knock it out at one time. How y'all doing tonight? Peace and blessings to you. All that good stuff. Uh, tonight we're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. I've been kind of, you know, just showing y'all that I'm keeping up, you know, good spirits, but like there's a flip side to this. There's some ugly to it. So we're going to get into that tonight. Um, we're going to talk about a bunch of things. We're going to talk about our um, what we're actually doing to keep our immune systems, um, you know, together, uh, all that jazz. We're going to talk about uh, what I'm taking, uh, what prescriptions I'm on. Um, we're going to talk about what I'm doing to make myself more comfortable, what I'm eating. <clears throat> no question is really off limits. If you're getting too crazy or I sense that your intentions are not pure or that you are just on here to be a mess, then I don't have a problem calling you out. I do have the spirit of discernment and it never leads me wrong. We're going to talk about some of the feedback that I've gotten. We're going to talk about Some of the videos that I'm seeing online, some of the stuff that I'm seeing posted on other people's pages, we're going to talk about the stigma, we're going to talk about the foolery, we're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. So go ahead, do me a favor, go ahead and share this live, or whatever, we're going to hop right to it. If y'all can see now, I'm in the midst of changing my bandages, so you can get a good look on my face. Um, I had a couple uh, areas of my face that I thought could be potential pustules. Um, one of them is scabbed over and falling off already up at the top, um, and it did not uh, leave a scar, praise the Lord. Um, so I'm definitely thankful for that. I see y'all coming on in. Thank y'all for being here tonight. I'm going to look at your comments here in just a second. I really appreciate y'all for your support, your encouraging words. Um... I appreciate those of you who have the smart little comments and stuff to make, you know. It makes me know that what I'm doing is worthwhile. That's the reason I'm doing what I'm doing. Stigma is real, y'all. And we wonder why people don't want to go to the doctor. We wonder why people don't want to be vulnerable and honest about what's going on with them. It's because you people are evil. Some of y'all are just the devil. And if you come on my live tonight, I'm going to expose you and rebuke you. And my mama on here, I think, so y'all better watch out for her. Because she got me covered in the tears, the snot, the slob, and the blood of Jesus. So y'all better leave me alone. Praise the Lord. Alright, we almost ready, y'all. Um... I'm not going to stand up because I got on my little yoga tights. So I was just stretching. Before I set the live up, what we about to make it happen? All right, let me plug this light in, get you a little more light so you can actually see my face and see what I'm going to show you, and then we'll get started. Mm 
Looks like we are good. Um, all right, so I do have a few bandages that I'm about to um, like replace. Um, I don't know if y'all can see. I'm gonna try to get as close as I can. But this right here was pretty big at one point. Um, didn't know if it was a pustule or not, but it was itching like a mug. So I don't know if because of the bandage being on that it suffocated or something and allowed it to go away or what. But I usually don't get like bumps like that right there in my forehead. So that was a concern. Um, you'll see here I have the bandages off just so that I can show y'all the pustules and what they look like. Now you see they've actually grown a little larger. They're raised, the ones here um, on my hand. So, yeah. That's why I left them off because I wanted y'all to be able to see. So I'm actually um, putting some larger bandages over them now. Um, and let me also say, uh, first and foremost, my name is Kendall Brink the Brown. Um, I'll answer that question in just a second. Um, and here we are. So I see some of y'all are asking me already, where are my gloves? I literally just washed and sanitized my hands. I work in the food health, uh, the, excuse me, the food service industry. Um, I'm also a certified. I also teach the courses. So I am damn near expert in properly cleaning and sanitizing my hands. I have not touched anything other than the bandage package here. Um, since we've been back on here, um, I picked up the bandages and moved them. Um, and then I also, what you can't see off camera is that I have a big bottle of, um, uh, Purell sanitizer right here. Um, I just got this and you can see I've already gotten it down to there, but I also have a whole gallon of sanitizer right here as well. So, um, you lie. I also have... My sanitation wipes right here. Um, this is not sponsored, <laughs> but yeah. Um, and then I got some more sanitizer right here. I got sanitizer all over the place in here, y'all. Um, so I appreciate your uh, your concern. Um, but as it relates to that, we got this. Um, so you can see that I shaved my beard and my goatee and stuff down. That's because I have right here one that's starting to form, it feels like, and it is um, a little painful. It was under my beard, so I didn't see it before. Um, so literally, I just put it here. Well, I went ahead and shaved my beard down. I didn't shave it all the way, and I shaved around that area um, so that I can actually get a bandage to stick on it. Um, I'm trying to do this in the light. Uh, but not the light rather. There we go. And as y'all can see, I have the waterproof 360 seal around the pad. Um, they're by Next Care. I get these from Walgreens. I've been getting them from Instacart. So they literally deliver them right to my door. I'm probably gonna have to redo this one. Sometimes they have a little problem sticking on the hairs or if I start to sweat a little bit prior to, they'll come off. But it does a really, really good job of sealing them in. All right, and since I touched that, I'm still gonna go ahead and get a pump of my hand sanitizer. And we're gonna sanitize my hands. I'm rubbing over every part of my hands except where those pops were. So I'm not touching that area right now. Okay, because I'm getting ready to replace the bandages on those as well, and I'm not trying to cross contaminate. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and cover those. Um, I got one more over here on my face. Um, I had a few down here that kind of went away, um, but they could have been hair bumps as well. And then I have a couple of series right here. Um, That could be just little hair bumps, but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna cover that one with a larger size bandage as well. I'll do it that way and cover all of those. And 
you just go around it like so like that. Alright. So ready to answer your questions, I do have gloves. Um with what I'm doing right now, it's not mandatory that I wear gloves. The truth of the matter is the same areas that I'm touching with my fingers, I would be touching with the gloves. So please tell me what point or what purpose the gloves would um actually serve right now. Especially if I'm not touching areas that have been contaminated. Again, I just washed my face, washed and sanitized my hands during and after. Um, again, these are two pox right here, but they're not called pox, they're called pustules. You can see, um, if you saw the first video that I did, which I believe was on day nine, you will see that they were a little smaller than they are now. So they actually have grown in size um, and they look to be filled with pus. Um, I'm gonna turn it to the side there so you can see how far it actually is raising off of my hand. Are oh, you saying in case I have small cuts? Well, I'm not spreading anything to those small cuts. Mama, you raised me this way. So, um, that's the reason I'm doing what I'm doing. I had good home training, good up, 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 upbringing. All of that. So, I'm going to go ahead and start covering these. And these are pretty strong. They're made by uh, Next Care, uh, 3M, but they're called Next Care Bandages. 3M is pretty pretty well known for their uh, safety equipment. Um, during the pandemic, they were really instrumental in getting out a bunch of those N95 masks, um, as well as some other products. Um, but their products, they're pretty, pretty good brand. Products are pretty reliable. If you invest in the stock market, I don't know where they are stock-wise right now, but... Um, Seems like they would be a good company to invest in just because their product line is so diverse. Um, and when we're dealing with all of these issues, it seems like I always go to their products. Um, <clears throat> I wonder what their dividends are. Um, that's another conversation for another day. Um, but since I ain't got nothing else to do, we're gonna talk about all of that kind of stuff tonight. Let me finish changing these bandages and then we'll hop right to it in terms of answering your questions. Um, all right, so we got that there. Take that off. All right, now I'm covered, not only in the tears, the snot, the slob, and the blood of Jesus, but I'm also covered in these Netscape 3M bandages, and they are fresh now. The good part about these, y'all, is that it helps trans. It helps uh, to prevent transmission, especially if you are in close quarters with uh, other people. Um, you know, not everybody has, you know, the ability to be home alone, like me. Um, right now, some people have roommates, some people have family that they live with. You know, um, so wearing clothes and covering your posture or your pustules. Uh, with bandages is a way um, to help keep others safe in situations where um, it's not the most ideal for you to isolate. Um, I'm just gonna go back through and kind of see if I have any questions that I've missed so far. What's up? What's up, Devon? Baxter Braxton, um, John Christopher, what's up, Twin? Monica, Javon, I see all y'all, okay. Stefan, I will not be standing up in these. Uh, this is not that type of live. Just, this is not uh, Kim Folk After Dark. I will not be standing up. I got on yoga pants. Y'all see all my business. I don't know. That might make my cash out ring, though, if I stand up. Mama, you ain't hear that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, I see a question here. It's asking what day am I on? I am, this is day 11 for me. Uh, so tomorrow will be day 12. Um, I got my results on day 
nine was it? Yeah, day nine, which was Friday, they called me. It took me a total of five days to actually get my results in. That's gonna come off. I'm gonna have to adjust it and turn it sideways. Cause there's still some hair right there. I didn't want to completely shave close because that's when I become susceptible to ingrown hairs. Um, all right, so what day am I in? I am on day number 11. Um, praise the Lord. Uh, so, and that's from the day that I actually started having my first symptoms. Um, I started having my first symptoms on Wednesday. Uh, it was like Wednesday morning. Um, I was having headaches, um, in addition to, uh, what did I have? I had headache. Uh, Wednesday night, I had a slight fever. Um, I was in a car accident on June 4th, so I was having some body aches, and yes, my back was hurting me a little more than it normally would be, um, but I don't know if that was, if it was exacerbated because of the monkeypox virus, or um, if that was solely because of the car accident that I was in. I have been in um, uh, uh, quite a bit of pain from that. Uh, I have bulging discs in my back. I have about eight discs um, that are degenerative, um, is what they call them, in my neck and in my back. Um, so I am currently doing a telehealth um, uh, visits uh, with my chiropractor, um, I have a TENS unit that I use and I put patches on my back and on the muscle areas um, that are helping me. So that's also helping me with the body aches um, that come along with it. Um, yeah, so I already had that equipment um, and then I'm going under pain management where I'm going to probably have to have a series of epidural shots in my spine um, in order to resolve some of this pain. Um, they're saying it's something I may be dealing with for the rest of my life. Um, the car accident was not my fault. I was hit from behind, praise the Lord. Um, they had state form. I have USAA, so insurance is not an issue. And I will be getting P-A-Y-E-D, as my grandfather used to say. Um, <clears throat> let's see. So I've answered where are my gloves. I've answered what day are you in. Have you been standing inside? Yes, I have been standing inside. Um, since I... Uh, um, since it was pretty clear to me that it was potentially the monkeypox disease, um, I have been doing my best to isolate. Um, I went to the grocery store, I believe, on Thursday. Uh, well, I went before that because I had a root canal um, on that Wednesday morning. Um, so I honestly thought that the fever and all of the other stuff outside of the headache was from the fact that I had a root canal. So, you know, that was part of the reason and me, of me being so hesitant with those particular symptoms to actually go um, directly to the doctor. Um, and then I knew that I was supposed to be going in for labs on that Monday. So I was like, okay, well, this may be from, you know, the root canal or what have you. Um, but at any rate, um, <clears throat> But yeah, I have been standing aside. So I did go to the grocery store on Tuesday and then I went again on, I believe it was Thursday or whatever when um, I said that I was going to get up Friday morning and, um, and uh, not Friday morning, when, uh, yeah, but <clears throat> when I, um, hold on. Yeah, I'm sorry. I lost my train of thought. But at any rate, yes, I have been staying inside. Um, how many days has it been? Again, it has been, uh, this is 11 days since I had my first symptom, which was the headache. And then that morning and then that, that Wednesday night um, is when I started having like the flu-like symptoms, like the feverish, the body aches, um, that stuff. I didn't have a sore throat. Um, I didn't have chills or anything like that. Uh, or what else? God bless your son. Be transparency. This is so informative. I know that this too shall pass. Yes, ma'am. I received that. Much appreciated. 
Uh, Dion, did they give me treatment yet? No, I haven't received any treatment. I just found out my results on Friday. They called me, the nurse from the health department, um, and she explained to me that the epidemiologist will be cut. I think I said that right. The ep that sound like I'm speaking in tongues. Um, the epidemiologist, uh, she is supposed to contact me on Monday um, to go over whatever it is that we're supposed to go over. I don't know what they're going to say to me. I don't know what they're going to ask. Uh, but we're going to go over that with them on Monday. Of course, I'll give you all an update and let y'all know what's going on with that. I can take this do-rag off for a second. My hair is braided back. Um, I've just been keeping my hair covered. like Just in case I get something in my scalp or whatever, I'm not scratching it. It's covered with a do-rag. Um, how many days do you have to quarantine? And also, have you taken the vaccine yet? No, I have not taken the vaccine. I have. I encourage all of you to do so. Um, again, I'm not a medical expert. Let me make sure that I put that out there. I am not a doctor. I'm not a physician. I'm not a nurse. Ain't never been to nursing school. Ain't never been to medical school. Don't know nothing about nothing when it comes to that, other than what I research online and what my doctors tell me. So I'm in the same boat that most of y'all are in. Um, <clears throat> But as far as how many days you have to quarantine, um, the virus generally takes two to four weeks to do its thing. Um, and this is one of those viruses that you just have to allow to run its course. Um, once it has run its course, um, those pox that I showed you, those pustules, they will begin to become a little more hard um, to the touch or whatever. Like, they feel hard now, actually. Um, and you saw how, how, how thick they were. If you didn't see that earlier in the live, you can go back and watch uh, the live and you'll be able to see where I actually show these exposed. Um, I actually show one that's starting to come here or it looks like it could be a pop. Um, I didn't recognize it before because it was under my beard. Um, but again, it's two to four weeks, but they don't clear you um, and justify you as healed until the, the actual pustules have um, first and foremost crusted over they scab, well, they scab first. They turn from this into like a black scab. Um, and then they crust over. You know how scabs get a little crusty around them? It's the normal healing process. That's what it looks like. Um, and then the scab falls off. And then a new layer of skin starts to uh, um, cover that area that you were dealing with. Um, Y'all see, I keep using my hand sanitizer. Anytime I touch anywhere around it, I go ahead and I sanitize my hands again just so that I'm making, I like to get in the habit of that so that I'm not spreading um, this virus. If you touching it and doing all of that and you touch something else, you've contaminated that particular object. Somebody else comes behind you, they can touch that particular object and um, if it's enough DNA on it or whatever from the uh, virus, then they can contract it just from uh, the touch you know it doesn't have to be skin to skin it can be skin to laptop it could be skin to uh atm pin it could be your atm pin pad when you're putting in your uh, your debit card number you know it could be at the atm machine it could be you know um on that shopping cart that you grab the handles on say i went in shopping and i had it and you see i got them on my hands you know i'm touching the shopping cart handle or whatever you know, like I'm contaminating that particular object. So, um, yes, you can get it that way. Um, again, it's not deemed a sexually transmitted disease right now. Um, there's not enough evidence or research in um, to determine it. I don't know what the criteria is to consider STD. Um, they're saying that there are some studies where they're showing that it was shown in the semen of some men that they tested. Well, some males that they tested. Let me say it that way. Um, I won't get in no trouble on here. All right. So, uh, but yeah, two to four weeks. Um, generally speaking, some people that I've talked to have been a little longer. Um, but then I believe that those people are doing things, um, just from speaking to them that are prolonging their healing process. They're not doing things to promote healing. Um, one of the things that does prolong your healing process is the use of tobacco products. Um, now, I don't know the science behind it. I did research and I did see it and I can pull that information up and actually I'll post it on the Box to Box um, Facebook page. Um, but there's something about the tobacco that slows down your body's ability to regenerate cells 
or something like that to like create the new skin and all of that. And again, they will not clear you until that particular uh, pustule has a new layer of skin over it. It has it has scabbed, crusted over, the scab is falling off, and a new layer of skin. Like so, your body is not going to be, you know healing if you keep doing stuff like you know smoking cigarettes using tobacco products um if you are a marijuana smoker i recommend you get you some raw wraps um <clears throat> i'm gonna tell y'all the truth uh i got me some good indica over here and when i get to feeling like i'm a co-star on the itchy and scratchy show um you know i can rub across the bandages without disturbing the pustule um and without spreading it um but I use raw wraps. Raw wraps, they're not a tobacco product. They're all natural. Um, and yeah, so that's a little tip right there. Don't use no uh, your blunts, uh, your cigarellos, all of that stuff. Uh, let's see what the next question is. Okay, uh, that's a good question. It comes from my mom who is actually a mental health therapist. Uh, so I kind of figured she was gonna ask a question on these lines. Uh, she says, these are stressful times. What steps are you taking? What steps have you taken or what, what steps have you taken to? Oh, what steps have you taken to take care of yourself mentally and emotionally or emotionally and mentally? Um, well, I, mama already know this, but I have the ability to compartmentalize my emotions um, or whatever. I can be a big crybaby when, you know, happy things happen to people that I love. Um, um, and, uh, like, I'm one of the people when I cry out to Jesus, I do the whole snot crying, sliding, all of that stuff too. So, um, I've had a few moments in here where I just kind of stretched out on the flow. Um, and like in those moments where I was meditating, uh, it was during my fast mainly, um, like I didn't ask God for anything. I didn't ask him to heal me. I didn't ask him to let this pass from me. I didn't ask God to you know, to, 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 to not let me get them in my face or any of the things that I know some of you all are praying for that are dealing with it. The only thing that I said when I prayed was thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Like, I just, I've been praying prayers of gratitude, thanking God for, you know, just the state of mind that I'm in, you know, the fact that I do have a support system, the fact that I do have family and friends who do love and care about me, you know, to the point where they are calling to check on me. I know that they're holding me up in prayer. They're keeping me, you know, um, lifted, you know, um, during these particular times, you know, so I don't take that for granted. Um, on the flip side of that, there are those other people um, <clears throat> who I have been there for. When I tell you I have went above and beyond to be there for some of these people that so-called called themselves my friends or whatever, and I have had a total of three oral surgeries, been involved in a car accident, and now I have been diagnosed with monkeypox, and I still have not heard from these people. You know what I'm saying? From, 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 well, from a couple of, well, one in particular, you know, um, but when it came down to them going through what they were going through, I moved heaven and earth to get to them, you know. Um, some of you all on this live know who it is, and you all can send this message back to them or whatever. Yeah, my feelings are hurt in terms of that. But I realize that sometimes God will put you in situations that make you uncomfortable to make you move past where you are or whatever. Um, sometimes we get stagnant. We become complacent with not only where we are in life, but with those that are attached to our lives. And God can't move you higher, you know what I'm saying, if you got a whole bunch of things, a whole bunch of people that are weighing you down. So as much as it may hurt me, I honestly feel like, you know, it was that time. You know, sometimes God will pull people out of your life for specific reasons. And you may not know why, you know, but those people were not meant to be lifelong, even though it may have been 15, 20 years, you know, that you've been an acquaintance with these particular people, you know, seasons, you know what I'm saying, change. You know, and I look at it that way in terms of that, in terms of being able to compartmentalize those emotions. Now, um, <clears throat> as far as my mental health is concerned, um, I do meditate. I do pray daily. Um, you know, 
in those times where I feel like I am, you know, getting ready to go down a rabbit hole of emotions, you know, I just say woo and blow, you know, I take a deep breath, um, and, you know, I do, I, 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 my mom, she, again, she's written some books and some things that talk about how to deal with anxiety and, you know, just how to handle those stressful moments. And I can't lie that a lot of her tips do work. Um, they're very, very simplistic, but just saying, woo child, you know, and just taking a deep breath sometimes will allow your mental state just to kind of reset and to, um, <clears throat> You know, you, I don't know. It just kind of helps. In addition to that, I don't know. I know mama don't necessarily want to hear this, but um, that indica, praise be unto Jesus. You know, um, yeah, that helps too. You know, high lifted up, sitting next to Jesus. That's what I'm talking about. Um, so mama, hopefully that answered your questions. But those are the things that I'm doing um, primarily to uh, to take care of my emotional and my mental health. Um, like, it's Jesus for me. Like, that's that's what's keeping me, y'all. Like, I can't even lie. Like, if that and, 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 and his good herbal remedies. Hallelujah. God, I thank God for that plant. He said, see, those, I told y'all about them prayers of gratitude. You know, like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, let's see. What else? What other questions do I have here? Let's see right off. Um. I don't think I'm supposed to concern in the back. If the devil is alive, you will not be in pain for the rest of your life. I know that's right, mama. I will not be in pain for the rest of my life. But um, if them people saying I'm going to be in pain for the rest of my life, then I need to pay them like I'm, I need them to pay me like I'm going to be in pain for the rest of my life. Because um, it's no joke. It's definitely no joke. Um, and I see you uh, saying that you understand with the back pain. Um, how long did it take for symptoms to appear? For symptoms to appear? I don't know. First of all, I don't know how I got it. So I can't really pinpoint how long it took or how long my incubation period was. Generally, your incubation period for uh, the virus is um, <clears throat> it's up to two weeks. Uh, but during that two week span prior to, I was at work. In addition to being at work, I went to the grocery stores. I drove Uber. I drove Lyft. Um, you know, I went and picked up food from a couple of restaurants. I went to the grocery store. I did all of the normal things that we normally do. Went to the bank. Um, <clears throat> I went to the club one night for, you know, a birthday gathering and uh, another event. So, um, yeah, uh, that's that. Um, but it was approximately two weeks. I think it was June. It was July 15th that I went to the party. And then July 27th, I believe it was, was the Wednesday that um, I saw the first little bump that actually did turn into a pop um, or to a pustule. Um, so that's the, what did I say? 15th 15, 15 plus 7, that's 22. So that's seven days plus another five. So it's like 12 days. So a little under two weeks. So I believe it was somewhere around in there that I uh, contracted it. Oh, uh, what else we got here? What have, Maurice Kennedy, what have you been using to treat it or does it just go away? Okay, so the monkeypox disease, they do have a few treatments. Um, one of the treatments that they're uh, toying around with right now is called the T-pox. It's called T-pox. It's an antiviral um, that they use to um, actually um, treat smallpox. Um, smallpox, smallpox, and monkeypox are both um, uh, members of the orthopox virus family. Unlike chickenpox, chickenpox is not in that same family, so it's not the same thing um, as some people. There are some similarities, but um, it's not the same virus at all. So you having chickenpox does not make you. Um, immune to uh, the monkeypox. Um, but what am I doing to treat it? Um, so there is, outside of that, there's really no treatment right now. Um, and I haven't spoken with the epidemiologist yet to actually uh, potentially get the T-pox 
treatment, but I have my own little remedy and I've done my little own research. So this is perfect time for me to talk about that. Um, as far as my own self-treatment, the first thing um, that I recommend doing, again, I'm not a medical expert, but this is just advice um, based off of my experience and experience of those that I have been um, talking to um, on a regular basis since um, I particularly thought that I may have had it, etc. My eyes itching. Um, all right. Oh, no, I don't think I ain't got no pop or nothing on my eye. So don't worry about that. Um, and again, my hands are clean. So y'all see me touching. Again, I keep sanitizing uh, my hands. Um, yeah, please like this. Please share it so that we can get as many questions in tonight as possible. Um, <clears throat> but as far as what I am doing to treat myself, um, first and foremost, I am vegan. Um, and on the onset of me uh, thinking that it may be possible for me to have monkeypox, I immediately um, wanted to put my body into a state of alkalinity. Um, disease flourishes in environments that are acidic. Um, and if you all know anything about your body's pH levels, um, acidity is where we get into those comorbidities and um, those things that many of us, especially uh, uh, men and women of color, um, are predisposition uh, to have. So uh, I wanted to make sure that I was putting my body, making sure that my immune system was as strong as possible prior to me even getting into, you know, um, the thick of things. So uh, the first thing that I did was I went on a vegan, uh, not a vegan, I went on a raw veggie fast, a raw, sorry, raw fruit and veggie fast. So um, I ate things like, um, well, out, excuse me, a raw, I can't talk tonight, a raw alkaline fruit and veggie fast. So in addition to just eating raw, raw food, I was eating food that is alkaline. Um, so things like seeded watermelon, seeded grapes, uh, cherries, um, oranges, pineapple, uh, mango is actually, uh, mango is actually alkaline and is a superfood. Um, but I'm allergic to mango, so I haven't had any mango, um, but I have had blueberries, um, raspberries, um, I've had apples, um, bananas, um, I've been making a lot of like little smoothies and things and just kind of drinking them down. Um, a lot of kale, spinach, um, all of those things. Um, avocado, I don't know if I said that. Uh, that and a lot of H2 agua or whatever. My skin ain't never looked this pretty. I know it's because I'm drinking all this water. So um, this is actually forming some really, really good habits for me. Um, most of y'all know I like to pick my face a lot. Like just, I, I feel like I got you know, my own set of tweezers. And I sit there and just pull, 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 pull. But this has kind of stopped me from doing that. Um, and I like this whole bandage thing. So when I do see the little, you know, bumps or whatever, I'm just gonna put a little Band-Aid over it and leave it alone. Um, so some good is actually coming out of this. Um, uh, other things that I'm doing to treat myself other than just uh, my diet um, and drinking a lot of water, um, getting a lot of rest. I'm definitely sleeping a lot or whatever. Um, I at first was trying to do it all at night and get eight hours solid or whatever, but that wasn't necessarily working for me. Um, just because sometimes you have to get up and you have to go to the restroom or, you know, all of that jazz. So um, whenever I feel like I need to go to sleep, I mean, I'm here. I don't have nothing to do. So I go and I lay my butt down. Um, that's the main thing. Your body has the ability to heal and rejuvenate itself um, when it's getting the proper rest or whatever. And that's not just for monkey box, y'all. Um, get rested, you know, and I definitely needed some rest. I've been, you know, um, super busy working. Um, okay. Uh, for muscle aches, uh, I have a TENS unit. This TENS unit here, I talked about that earlier. Um, I got it from my chiropractor. Um, it's a part of the treatment from my accident, but it has definitely been helping me through, throughout this. Um, just dealing with my back starts to hurt or, you know, uh, like my shoulder has been hurting a lot um, here lately or whatever. And um, it started hurting me a few weeks 
prior um, to the whole monkey pox day, but now it's really just like on it. So tonight I'm going to take these pads and I'm going to hook them up um, to the different muscle points surrounding my shoulder and my, um, my neck area back here or whatever. And then I can actually turn up the dial here or whatever, and it sends an electromagnetic magnetic pulse through those pads. Um, there are four pads. It sends those to, uh, to my body. So those are some of the things that I'm doing. Um, <clears throat> for pain management, um, I have just about every um, drug from Narcos to Class II pharmaceuticals um, and all of that. But I don't want to uh, become dependent on anything strong. So um, at first I was taking the ibuprofen. I have the 600 milligrams and I have the 800 milligrams. But then I read an article that said that if you have proctitis, um, that um, um, it says to stay away from um, anti-inflammatories or the NSAIDs, I have you pronounce them, um, the, the, you announce it or pronounce it. Um, again, I'm not a medical expert. Um, so I stopped uh, taking the ibuprofen and I switched over to just the Tylenol, um, so the acetaminophen. Um, and I've been taking the 325 milligrams I have prescription from my doctor, but you can get that over the counter as well. Um, that's just for like pain management. Um, and in addition to me having an indica um, uh, strain of cannabis uh, that is used to treat, you know, severe pain or chronic pain uh, for several other illnesses uh, or conditions. So um, I have some of that as well. I'm trying to take a pretty, a pretty much a holistic approach to uh, this whole thing. Um, so let's get into some of the things that I do on a daily uh, in order to treat myself. Every day I'm taking, in the morning, the first thing I do is I take a vitamin C packet. Um, it's an effervescent uh, vitamin C packet. Uh, I got these from Whole Foods. Uh, I take one every day. Um, once a week. Usually on a Wednesday, I'm taking uh, 3,000 milligrams of vitamin C, um, and that's just to reset my immune system. Um, that's something that Nurse Sandy B, my grandmother, God bless her, um, she taught me years ago, um, and I've been doing it ever since. Um, ever since this whole pandemic has been going on, um, one of the things that they did notice um, is that uh, African Americans who had contracted COVID uh, show deficiencies in their D3 levels. Um, so I am on a D3 and K2 supplement. I've been taking these ever since the, the pandemic began or whatever. Um, the D3 um, is where the deficiencies lies. But uh, if you just take the D3 by itself, um, you can, uh, I think it's a calcium buildup um, that can happen as a result of that. And that's the reason that they have the K2 um, that you can take as well that helps you to um, helps prevent those calcium buildups. So I'm taking those two things. Um, in addition to those, I'm also taking daily and have been taking for a while um, CMOS capsules. Uh, these are organic um, and they're 1600 milligrams. I take two per day. Um, <clears throat> CMOS, CMOS has 92 of 92 of the 102 minerals that your body minerals that your body is made up of the reason that some of you all can't get well is because you have mineral deficiencies and um, <clears throat> even if you are taking the good stuff your body is not absorbing those uh, because of the mineral deficiencies so you're eating but you're not getting the proper nutrients from the food that you eat because you have the deficiencies that prevent you from doing so so um, this Right here, y'all, like, y'all wonder what the secret is to my hair and, you know, all this other stuff that y'all be asking me. This is it. This is the GOAT. This is the Holy Grail. Um, it's the sea boss for me. Um, again, that and a lot of alcohol, a lot of water. Of course, I'm taking my normal medications. Um, what else? Uh, <clears throat> um, one of the things that I read online was that... Uh, um, if you have a condition called proctitis, um, which is one of the side effects that you may experience um, when you have uh, the monkeypox virus or whatever, proctitis um, 
is inflammation of the rectal area or whatever and it has nothing to do with sex it has nothing to do with your position when you having sex or anything like that or whatever um, this is something that is bought on by the monkey pox virus some people have it um, some people deal with it some people don't or whatever me i am dealing with it so um <clears throat> that was one of the things that happened like in the first few days um so like that maybe like that friday and saturday it, it got kind of bad i didn't say much about it but um it can be painful and that's one of the things that a lot of people are taking um some like serious pain pills you know or pain medication to uh deal with because um it can be difficult for you to have a bowel movement um in the event that you know you have the proctitis now i don't have any um pustules that are internal um in terms of my rectal or my anus you know um thank god or whatever and some people do so that makes it even more difficult um but one of the things that actually treats the uh that they use to treat the um proctitis is a uh is a steroid um one of those steroids is prednisone so i am on my fifth day of taking my prednisone packet um and truth the, the truth of the matter this is all god y'all this is all divine intervention divine timing or whatever and that's how i know god has me through this situation because i had a, um, a root canal this is not my first root canal but because for, for some reason um she was like you know hey i'm gonna give you you know um, a prednisone packet, you know, just in case you have some additional pain from the tooth until she can finish because the one that's at the top that she, she finished one and then I have another one that's at the top here um, that she started. I have to go back uh, in September to have that one finished or whatever. But in the event that I had some pain or it starts to get on my nerves or what have you, um, she gave me the prednisone um, as, as a safeguard. She was like, you may not need but if you do, I'm going to give you the prescription. This is what it's for. Um, unbeknownst to me, um, it's also the treatment for proctitis. So God is good. Won't he do it? Um, so, yes, I have been treated with prednisone um, <clears throat> for the proctitis. Um, prednisone also uh, will cause your immune system to kind of come down. So generally when they pre prescribe you prednisone, they also give you an antibiotic. Um, I have finished my first Z pack, um, but just as a safeguard, I have another prescription for Z pack right here or whatever. Um, and I will probably start that one um, after it'll be sometime after I finish the prednisone. Um, like it's another antibiotic, so I'm gonna hang on to this one. Um, and space it out after I speak with the epidemiologist and she gives me her, you know, thoughts and her concerns. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, yeah, talk to her, um, about when I should use it, if I should use it, all of that stuff. Again, I'm not a medical expert, but these are just the things that I'm doing to treat myself. Um, so that was a very, very good question. The other thing is, um, of course, me using the bandages just to cover the uh, pustules. Um, that's part of the treatment process. Um, if they're exposed and you're scratching them, you're rubbing on them, you're touching on them, if they touch your clothes, if they touch your beddings, your bedding becomes contaminated, your clothing becomes contaminated. Um, and, you know, like you touching them and rubbing other areas of your body could potentially spread them to other areas of your body. Like, I'm not trying to have that, you know. Um, so since day one, I've had them covered, you know, um, the world health organization says that, uh, it, it says on the website, uh, that you can leave them uncovered. Um, but if you are in situations where you are around other people or have to come in contact with people, um, then it's best to cover them. So I'm just taking that precaution to cover them so that I'm not spreading them to me. Um, I don't, I have animals. I don't want my animals to end up contracting that. I don't allow them to sleep in the bed with me. They're literally on the opposite side of the room. Um, I always wash my hands, sanitize, uh, do the whole nine, um, whenever I'm preparing their food, even, or if I'm giving them food or anything like that. Um, now that is an instance when I am interacting with them, I have to do something concerning them that I will put on gloves, like when I'm fixing their food. 
um, etc. Um, just because I want to be extra cautious. Um, I do, uh, if I have to be like right, well, I don't have to be right in their face, but if I'm down there and I just want to pet them or something like that, because, you know, they're used to me being all over them, loving on them, them sleeping in the bed with me, all of that stuff like that. So I use gloves for that. Um, um, but yeah, the bandages are a part of my treatment. Um, I did think that I had one that was inside my mouth. It was on my lip. Um, so I went and I ordered these Dentec Advanced Canker Sore Patches. Um, I've recommended these to a few other people who actually do have them in their mouths. Um, and they're little like circular patches. You take them, you dry the area of your mouth that has the sore um, or the pustule. You put the patch over the pustule or whatever, hold it for five seconds or whatever, and then it adheres to that particular pustule. Um, the one that I had on my lip on the inside, I put it on there and literally within hours, um, it had disappeared. I don't know if it was my mom home praying and, and, and or, whatever, <laughs> or whatever, but I'm telling you no lie, it disappeared. Just like the one that was right here, just vanished or whatever. Um, so God is good again. Um, but that's what I'm using. It is the Dentec Advanced Canker Sore Patch or whatever. I'm using those to cover anything that may come up in my mouth. Um, <clears throat> um, I do also know um, that several people have um, gotten them like on their feet. Um, uh, one of the things that <clears throat> um, actually works um, for the itching um, also is cortisone cream. Um, I don't put it on the actual pustule. I put it around the area. Um, and that's been giving me a little relief as well. Um, so uh, cortisone cream. Um, I just got this from my local CVS, I believe. Yeah, this is from CVS. It's just a CVS brand or whatever. Um, I use that. That's been helping with the uh, with the, uh, the 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 episodes of the uh, Itchy and Scratchy show. Um, <clears throat> there was something else. Oh, uh, like if you get them like on your feet or on, in areas that like you really can't scratch or you get a bunch of them in a cluster or whatever. One of the things that I've been doing is I've been covering them with the actual, uh, with the bandages, but you can also use lidocaine patches. Um, lidocaine patches have, um, been pretty good, uh, in terms of, you know, just like relieving, uh, pain in a general area. So they have the bigger patches that you can use for your back. Like, so if you were dealing with them on your foot, um, or something like that and they're hurting or whatever, I recommend that you cover them first um, and then get you one of the lidocaine patches and just kind of wrap your foot in the lidocaine patches. Um, I had a couple of my uh, um, folks to test that theory out or whatever and they said that it did give them some great temporary relief. Again, this is not you know a surefire way to heal you, but these are things that um, can help you to get through it if in fact you do contract um, the monkeypox virus and y'all is definitely going to spread because people ask acting real cavalier um, about it and I just hope that you're not the one to get it um, in the event that you are or whatever I'm going to be here to help you uh, make it through it or whatever you can call me, you can talk to me, you can inbox me all that good stuff um, what else um, I think that's pretty much it in terms of me treating myself. Um, let's talk about like what I'm doing as far as bed. I got a whole bunch of laundry that I got to do. Um, <clears throat> and one of the things that I did get just as an extra preventative is the Lysol's uh, laundry sanitizer. It has 0% bleach in it. This is just to make sure that my clothes are sanitized um, and that I'm not spreading it or potentially reinfecting myself. Again, we don't know a whole lot about this virus. We don't know if once you get it, you got it and you can't get it again, or if you can get it multiple times, or if you can reinfect yourself, or how, you know, that particularly works or whatever. But I'm doing everything that I can to make sure that I'm good. Um, so this is what I use for that in addition to my normal uh, tie-free laundry detergent um, for my colored clothes and then um, some good old-fashioned Clorox for uh, my wipes. 
um, in addition to my laundry detergent. So that's that. I'm also changing my bed linen at least every other day. Um, I am sleeping again with my pop, with my pustules covered. Um, in addition to them being covered, I'm also uh, <clears throat> changing my bed linen. Well, I'm, first and foremost, I'm wearing clothes. I'm wearing like my long sleeve shirts, my winter clothes. You know, I kind of pulled them out. Long sleeve shirts, sweats, um, just to keep my body covered, and socks. Um, just in case I form new uh, pustules throughout the night or they start to itch and it's a new one and I start to scratch it, at least, you know, in my sleep or whatever, at least it's under the clothes or whatever um, and it's preventing it getting on my bed linens and um, it's, you know, just kind of mitigating the cross-contamination. Um, <clears throat> so, I'm changing my bed linens like every other day. Um, I need to do laundry. What else? Um, cleaning off the surfaces that you touch a lot. Like um, I have my laptop in front of me. Um, so I definitely use these wipes and I just go over my laptop. Like probably like I'm on it a lot. So um, generally before I start using it, I do it. After I use it, I wipe it down again. Um, like things like my remotes, uh, my cell phone, um, all of those things, I am, you know, uh, pretty much consistently wiping down. Um, I also have the big cans of the Lysol spray. Um, here it is right here. <clears throat> Got these big cans. I have a couple of those here. Um, so I'm just spraying down surfaces, trying to keep everything as clean and sanitary um, as possible. Uh, so I think that pretty much covers all of that. Oh, okay. Something called t -pox that my doctor prescribed. Okay. Okay, yeah, t -pox is an antiviral. Um, so you tested positive? Okay, um, hit me up. I'm interested in knowing your experience. Um, do you have any idea where you contracted it from or how? Um, I do not know where, um, I initially thought that maybe I got it when I was at my folks' birthday gathering at the club, um, but no one else that was around me or close to me has uh, contracted it, um, so I don't know that to be true. That's why I said I do not know. Um, um, it was not from a sexual encounter. Um, neither one of my partners. Yeah, I got a couple. Mm -hmm. um, Test it. <laughs> Or have had any symptoms or anything like that. Um, I have not been out there in these streets being nasty. Um, I, I can be, and I ain't opposed to it, but right now is not the time. You know, when stuff like this happens, I do go into a bubble, and I'm definitely a lot more cautious than I am when stuff like this ain't going on. But hey, here we are. Um, but no, I don't think it was sexually. Um, a sexual encounter that did it. Um, I think it was just me living my everyday life, um, just as many other people who have contracted it. Um, what's the next question? What has been the impact of stigma and responses from providers, friends, and um, lovers? Um, or I'll say loved ones. Um, what has been the impact, impact of stigma? Um, I think the impact of stigma has affected other people more so than me. Like, I've never been one who has shied away from talking about the things that most people are afraid to talk about. Um, it is what it is. You know, God puts you in particular situations for reasons or whatever. Um, and, you know, like I don't feel condemned. I don't feel ashamed um, because I know that this is not me just, this is not God punishing me. This is not something where I've been putting bad energy into the atmosphere and I'm reaping what I've sown or that I picked at somebody for going through something and now God is punishing me by taking me through something. I don't look at it that way at all. Um, I don't look at this um, as a setback. I look at this as an opportunity. You know, um, I know that this is a part of who I am. I believe that, uh, you know, uh, my gift will make room for me. Um, I have a lot of talents, a lot of abilities, and a lot of things about me that people love um, and admire. Um, but when you sum all of that up, it, it goes back to who I am. And I honestly feel like that's my gift. My gift is who I am, and if I continue to be me and be authentically me, um, be transparently me, you know, be real about who I am, not just with me, but with those around me, 
um, and operate with integrity um, that uh, you know that this will be an opportunity for me and that my gift me being who I am in this situation will make room for me in other areas um, so um, yeah uh, as far as the stigma is concerned um, it really hasn't had much of an impact on me other than pushing me to want to speak out even more just because I've seen some of the other lives of other people who are just making this you know um, you know and I'm again I'm not discounting their experience but I'm not gonna get on here and cry and do all of that, you know, show y'all how much pain I'm in for sympathy or for empathy or anything along those lines. Um, <clears throat> that's not what I'm here for. Um, like, there's no shame in the fact that I have it. I have it. Um, and my goal is to help anyone who does have it or who will have it, you know, to make it through it uh, without being having to deal with some of the things that cause the emotional setbacks and the mental setbacks you know i probably would you know be a little more down if i had them all over my face or all over my body or whatever it would call it would be definitely more cause for concern but you know again i've been doing you know the things that i've read up on and uh, covering them and not messing with them so that they don't spread and I'm a witness that they have not spread it, you know. So, um, and responses from providers. Um, now, as far as providers, it's obvious that these people don't know what they're doing. They don't, they don't, they don't understand it. They don't know what's going on. I saw some videos where some nurses was like, if they bring a monkeypox case around me, I'm out or whatever. Um, they need to put them on an the island by themselves and make them stay six months until they ain't got it no more. And even after they got it, they need to leave them there. You know, if you got monkey pops, we can't be friends. Da -da -da -da. I've seen all of that type of stuff from uh, service providers online, videos that have been posted on TikTok and other social media platforms. It's disgusting to me. Um, <clears throat> as far as I'm concerned, um, when I went to the doctor, I ended up having to wait six hours just to be tested. I wasn't there to be tested. I was there for labs. Um, and when I got there, I intended to get tested, but because I got there a little after um, they opened, uh, I guess they had already filled up, but it wasn't, the, the place wasn't full. So I'm just like, well, y'all don't even have that many people in here. Some of the people in here are for, here for the vaccine. Some of the people in here are just for labs. Some people are here for other things. Um, and y'all are saying y'all don't have any slots for me to be tested. And I'm showing y'all that I have um, symptoms. Um, when I came in, initially, they did not um, separate me or isolate me from anyone else. I told them, okay, I was like, hey, uh, I think I got the monkey box. You know, and the lady, she looked at me and she started laughing because I guess she didn't take me serious because of the way I said it, you know. Uh, but I'm just like, well, what you want me to do? You want me to sit here and cry? You want me to sit here and follow? Oh, my God, I think I got monkey box. You know, no, I'm not doing all of that. It is what it is. I'm an adult. I'm a big boy. I put my big boy drawers on. Hey, I think I got the monkey box. Um, I need to get tested. Um, so she told me initially that I wouldn't be able to get tested or whatever. Um, and she was like, well, the doctor doesn't have any more appointments available. She showed me who the doctor was um, or whatever. Um, initially, she said she was going to let me talk to her, but the doctor never came out. I ended up waiting about four hours before I finally went back up. It was like, what's going on? She thought I had already been called back. Um... <clears throat> Nevertheless, they got me registered. I ended up getting back to the back um, for them to take me back to get lab work done. And they took me back with a couple of other people, you know, that were there as well. Oh, whatever. And I'm just like, these people don't know what they're doing. Like, you know, I'm clearly supposed to be isolated, but I ain't the medical professional. They are. Um, I was sanitizing my hands and I had Lysol with me, um, you know, and at that point I had already covered you know, what I thought were the pox. So I wasn't out here, you know, potentially spreading or contaminating um, people or other things um, around me. So when I got to the back, I finally was um, able to kind of go rogue and duck off from the nurse that was about to do um, my lab work. Um, and I found my doctor, uh, show her what was going on. And she put me in a separate room. Um, I stayed in there for about an hour and 15 minutes. Um, before she came back to get me so that was a little daunting um, but I had my laptop my iPad and my phone with me so I was Gucci um, and then she finally brought me and she did an exam um, she did cultures of my actual uh, 
areas of concern and she uh she's like hey you'll know in three to five days um you know what's what or whatever and on the fifth day is when i got my phone call um she didn't really have on any pp um e um she had on a n95 mask and then she had on a regular like one of those overlap coats that you can just kind of take off and throw away um and then her regular gloves um some nitrile gloves um, so it wasn't anything special about that. I've heard other people's experience where they literally came and got them out of the lobby, wouldn't let them sit anywhere, uh, isolated them. And then when they took them up to a room or whatever to isolate them, they came down in full hazmat PPE gear or whatever. That probably would have freaked me out too. You know, I can't lie. Luckily, I did not have that experience. But again, you know, I ended up waiting for a while. Um, that's another thing. Like, if you aren't experiencing any symptoms like pain or uh, difficulty swallowing or sore throats or anything like that that you actually need medical attention for, then there's much or nothing that the uh, that the uh, ER can do for you. Um, the ERs generally aren't doing tests. Um, they're going to recommend that you contact your, your primary care physician and go to the health department. So um, that's a bill that you don't necessarily need um, if you can withstand not going. They can't do anything to stop the spread of them. They can't do anything. The only thing they can do is give you something to manage your pain if you are in pain. So if you're not in any pain, you know, you might as well stay that ace home, you know. Um, <clears throat> so what else? Um, stigma from friends. I haven't had any stigma from friends um, or any of my loved ones. In fact, um, the people who love me the most, they've been here. You know, they've contacted me. They've called. They've come by and dropped stuff off outside the door. Um, my, 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 my Glammy, uh, Naisha, she sent me some money or whatever for some groceries or whatever. Uh, I definitely used that to get me some groceries. Um, so I thank her for that. Um, uh, my, my, my pops, Gerald Stevens, of course, um, you know, he came by. Uh, and he brought me some crutches because I had one that was on the bottom of my foot um, and it was a little painful to, for, to walk. So um, I was using the crutches to get around or at least one of them just kind of, you know, keep me off of the sole of my foot um, while that is healing. Uh, and then he bought me some more of uh, my sanitation wipes and uh, yeah, some baby wipes. Um... Who else? Uh, of course, like, you know, Chris Higgins, you know, calling me all the time, checking on me, texting me, making sure I'm okay. Um, as well as, you know, several other people um, that have just been reaching out and making sure I'm good. My mom, of course, is always a huge support system. Um, even when ain't nothing going on, she's going to call me 30, 11 times. Uh, yeah, you know, my family, all that good stuff. So no issues with them. Um you push past that and focus on you okay is it true that you can you still get the vaccine while you're infected yes if you get the vaccine um within 14 days of um your symptoms i believe it is then they're saying that it can lessen the it can lessen your body's response to it um so if you have not had the vaccine and you do have an opportunity to get the vaccine even if you have tested positive or whatever um, you can get the vaccine and it is said to help, you know, in terms of you not having, um, such a bad reaction, uh, to it. So, um, yes, it is true. Um, let's see what other questions. I see Najee, what's going on? My grandbaby Roman. Michael Lewinsky, happy birthday, boo. Um, so are they just on my upper body? You may have said that already. No, I didn't. Um, I do have them on my upper body. Um, I have one that is right here. Um, there's one on my elbow here. There's one here. One on my hand here. There's also one on the beginning of my nail bed here, but I had a bandage on that and because of where it's located at, some water got under the bandage um, just because it's on, like the bandage was on my nail um, as well. Um, so you know how when you're washing dishes and your hands turn that white, 
you know, and then they turn all wrinkly. Like that's what happened under here. So I took the actual bandage off and I put some gauze around it, um, and some with some medical tape. That's another thing that I'm doing because um, I do have them on my lower body as well. Um, I have one on my left foot and on my left on the top of my left foot in between my big toe and the toe beside it. I have one on the bottom of my foot. Um, and then I have three on my right foot, one on my big, one on the left, the right side of my big toe, um, one right on the top of my foot and one on the side of my foot. Um, I have, uh, one on my left knee, one on my right knee, two above my right knee, like on my thigh area. Um, I have... Two on my butt cheek, one on the left, one on the right, and then I have uh, two like right smack dab in the middle of the crack of my ice or whatever. So um, in order to keep that area clean, I do use um, this is just a packet of it that I had that they gave me from a burn clinic when I had my last uh, when I got burned at work. Um, this is just um, triple antibiotic ointment, um, and then I have an actual tube of the Neosporin. Um, so I'm actually using that like on the ones in the crack of my ass or whatever on my butt. Let me stop uh, 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 cussing. Um, but yeah, like I put the Neosporin on it or whatever. I clean it up with like an antibiotic, antibacterial baby wipe um, or wipe. And then I uh, put the Neosporin on it and then I use gauze. Um, I use this gauze and um, I use the medical tape. Uh, and what I do is I just pull off a strip of it. I put two pieces of tape, one at the top, one at the bottom. And then I go through like I'm one of the gals and tucking or something like that. And I just put it on back there in between the crack of my butt. Over the over, tape it on down. And I'm good to go. Again, that keeps, you know, those pustules from contaminating my clothes. Um, I'm making sure I'm wearing some, you know, fitted underwear or like tights or like, that's why I got my yoga tights right now. Um, that's why I ain't standing up because I ain't got no underwear and I ain't trying to give y'all that type of show tonight. Um, Cause y'all gonna have to pay me. I'm gonna be like everybody else posting my cash. Yeah, run me mine. Um, so yeah, um, I'm using gauze, um, to do that as well. So that answers that question. Yes, I do have them on the lower regions of my body. Um, in total, I have less than 20 um, pustules, which is a blessing because um, some people have been in the 50s. Um, why is it said that it's most prevalent in the gay community? That's because of our social networks. Um, if, <clears throat> if, the, if patient zero would have been a black woman entrepreneur, and this black woman entrepreneur came back over here and she went to, she went and she hung out around a bunch of black women entrepreneurs and went to a black entre, a black women's entrepreneurial summit or whatever, or what, or what have you, because of her social network, you know, it would have been prevalent in black women entrepreneurs. That doesn't mean that it's a black woman entrepreneur virus. Um, <clears throat> if you are somebody who's on the music scene, you're a musician or whatever, and you came back over here and you attend a bunch of open mic nights and you attend, you, you go to a bunch of studios and you hang around a lot of musicians. The people who are going to be affected or um, contracted from your exposure are going to be those people that are within your social networks. So the person who was patient zero came back over here and apparently he was around some of the gays. Um, and it said that they were over in Spain, this patient that bought it back, um, and they went to some type of sex convention. You know, um, I don't know that to be true. I have not fact checked that. So that may or may not be the case. Um, but the fact that they came back and they were around the gays, you know, um, that's how this infection spread amongst the gays or whatever. So again, this is not a gay virus. Anybody can catch it. Anybody can get monkeypox. So stop saying that, stop saying that. If you think that it's a gay virus, come to my house and um, come lay in the bed with me for 20 minutes. Let me rub on you a little bit. And we gonna see if it's a gay virus. Let me give you a massage. Or, or better yet, just come give me a hug. 
You know what I'm saying? Let me put these pox in your face. You know what I'm saying? And let's see if you get it because you're still straight. Being heterosexual is not going to prevent you from getting the monkeypox. Thank you very kindly. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it's prevalent in the gay community right now because that's, you know, it, it's because of our social networks. The gays hang with the gays most of the time, you know. Uh, we go out to the gay clubs. We go to places that celebrate us. You know, we're not safe. It's not safe for us to go to every place, you know, or everywhere. Um, so that's that. Okay, so I just tuned in. Thank you for your honesty, transparency, and willingness to use your experience to educate. I have so much respect for you. Thank you, Sage. Um, I really appreciate that, y'all. Um, people are reacting to this a lot different than I expected. Um, I was not looking for any type of pity or I was not, you know, looking for, um, you know, I, di I didn't see this as a big deal. Like with me coming online and just talking about what's going on with me. But literally, people are... Um, Yeah, they're talking about it a lot, you know. It, it's, it makes me feel good that you all appreciate it, and I feel like what I'm doing is not going in vain. Um, and I really, really hope that, you know, you all can learn from my experience. Um, and, you know, that be that. Um, what else? Uh, so, some things that I feel you should not do, or what shouldn't you do, um, as far as this virus is concerned, um, if you do contract the virus, do not use tobacco products. That slows down your healing process. Um, do not scratch them. Do not pick them. Do not pop them. Um, them being closed uh, makes them less, uh, what's the word, um, less contagious. Uh, once they pop and the fluid in them comes out, like that fluid can go anywhere and it's easier for you to spread that as opposed to just spreading the um, DNA. Um, get myself another sanitize. Um, be careful eating spicy food or food that's really acidic, um, especially if you develop proctitis because that's spicy food. Imagine um, having hemorrhoids or something and you eat some spicy, spicy, or just eat something spicy, spicy, period. You know, it go in spicy, it come out spicy. And if you got proct uh, proctitis, baby, your booty hole gonna be on fire, okay? Um, uh, what else? I'm kind of looking over my notes up here to see. Uh, I'm trying to think of anything else that. Um, I mean, in a separate thread, I'm gonna need y'all to let me know some uh, movies or some. Um, shows that are on um that i can kind of watch binge watch i just finished all rise i'm caught up on that absolutely love that um i tried to watch uncoupled y'all that ain't for me mm -mm. it's a little too vanilla um like i love uh you know shows that are kind of geared around you know um the black experience um, i like to hear from my people about my people um, all that good stuff. So any movies or shows that kind of um, talk about history, documentaries, all of that good stuff, uh, I'm here for it. Let me know. Um, what else? Um, are there any other questions that y'all may have for me specifically? Let me get my phone and look to see if anything came through my inbox. I got to roll around because I can't stand up. <clears throat> I got on pants, but they my yoga tights. And y'all won't get me. Um, how long did it take for symptoms to appear? I already answered that one. Okay. Um, one of my boys, Antonius, he's... Um, he actually went public with his diagnosis um, and was one of the people that I talked to uh, when I thought that I may be uh, positive. 
Um, and uh, he's saying that all of his symptoms appear at different times within 24 hours. I can say the same. Yeah, it did happen within 24 hours because I had headaches that morning. Um, it wasn't until that night that I got the fever um, and started experiencing the body aches um, and all of that stuff. So, yeah, that was all within a 24-hour period. Um, time period. What are the symptoms experienced in what timing order? Um, symptoms um, that I experienced again were the headaches. Um, I had a slight fever. Um, well, Wednesday morning was the headaches. Wednesday night, and I had a slight fever um, and some body aches. Uh, that was pretty much the major. That was the that was, those were the basis of the symptoms. Um, by Friday, I started to develop the proctitis, which is the inflammation of the rectal region. Um, and when I would use the restroom, sometimes I would think I would have to go to use the restroom and it would be a little painful. Um, and I was initially taking ibuprofen ahead of time. I started doing that because I realized, okay, hey, yeah, it's kind of, you know, uh, yeah, it's definitely some inflammation back there. Let me take an anti-inflammatory. But after I read that they recommend that you not take uh, things like ibuprofen, um, and that they recommend you having a steroid. That's when I switched and I started using my prednisone pack. Um, <clears throat> for that, um, so the flu-like symptoms was the first day. Um, within two days, I Call you back, Ma. On live. Hit you right back. Um, yeah, so by Friday it was the proctitis. Um, and then after that, it was just the body aches. Now, um, from the day that I saw my first pustule, the first ones that I saw was the one in the middle of the, the, I felt one, well, no, it was the one on my hand. And then um, by that Thursday morning, I had the one in the crack of my butt. Um, <clears throat> so, um, it took about a day and a half for them to start itching. And when I tell y'all, it was the it was me co-starring literally in the episode of the Itch and Scratch It show. Like, it itches. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It itches. It itches. It itches. It feels like I went to Palaka, Florida and stayed outside on the river over the, and the mosquitoes tore my ass up. It, it, that's what it feels like. It feels like you got bit by a bunch of mosquitoes um, in every little area that, you're, uh, that you have a pustule in. So... Yeah, it can be intense. Um, yeah, ain't nothing pretty about it. The proctitis, it can be painful. Um, oh, that's my mom. That's Nicole checking on me, making sure I'm okay. Um, yeah, I'm okay. Um, she said she's gonna check on me tomorrow. She's going to bed. Um, <clears throat> yes, blimp. It felt like I was in blimp, Keisha. Girl, it felt like I had came home and the mosquitoes ate me alive. That's what it feels like. It feels like one of them fire ants in them fire beds that you pull the hot sausage juice on. That's some country stuff. To kill them. Oh. <laughs> it feels like one of them crawled up in between my toes and bit me. And that's what the pustules look like as well. So, um, <clears throat> those are side effects. Outside of that, it's just on and off itching. You know, um, I've been having some back pain. My shoulder's hurting right now. Um, like outside of that, you know, um, I mean, it ain't been all peaches and cream. I just been managing it, you know, um, and in those moments where I feel like, you know, it's too much or the itching and all of this stuff is just getting on my nerves. Like it's nothing for me to, uh, pull out them old good raw wraps, praise the Lord. And that good indica, um, and that generally puts me right on out, puts me on sleep helps me to rest quite well. Um, so it's just about establishing coping mechanisms. Um, what is my experience assessing testing? Hell, um, that's what it was. Uh, I called every number that the health department had here in Atlanta um, and in Fulton County, even DeKalb County. I was not able to get answers. Um, DeKalb answered, um, but they, uh, I forget what DeKalb said. Um, 
I don't think the cab answered initially. No, they said that they didn't have any appointments for the vaccine and stuff. That's what I was calling them for. I called them trying to find out about the vaccine. But when I was doing the whole testing process, I was trying to get to Fulton County or whatever. Um, when I went there, I asked them, well, how do you get on the list? You know, because they were saying that she had to be on a list in order to get the test in. She was like, she didn't know. She gave me the information for the Department of Public Health or whatever. Um, I had already contacted that number. I called the Department of Public Health for the state. The state says that you have to contact um, your local um, uh, health departments, et cetera. Contacted all of those lines. Um, uh, infectious Disease Clinic, the uh, Ryan White Clinic, the... Um, like literally every number that they could that they had posted um, and that they had accessible and I couldn't get through on any of those I wasn't able to get up to get tested until I went up there and even when I got there they told me that they had no more appointments for the day to be tested or whatever so um, if you're gonna go um, Fulton County Health Department opens tomorrow morning at 8 30 a.m. I recommend you be there by 8 15 so that you can go ahead and be in line and ready um, so that you're one of those first people so you can guarantee that you can get tested. If in order for you to get tested, you must have a pustule um, available for them to swab and or culture. They may have, to, they may lance it. Uh, some people are doing that, even though I've read on the CDC's website that that's not necessary. Um, but I guess they're doing that just to make sure that they have enough um, DNA on the sample for them to actually um, do the testing. So, um, <clears throat> Yeah, uh, that's that. Testing is hell. Um, I'll post some more links. I've already got some posted on my page now of where you can be tested at. Um, A Vision for Hope is doing testing by appointment only. Um, that number is on my page as well as on the Box the Pox page. Um, so you can find those resources there. Um, <clears throat> uh... What else? Um, what's another question? I'm looking through my inbox at questions that I have. Um, what happens after a positive DX uh, or receive a positive diagnosis? Um, yes, you are expected to quarantine. Uh, you are to quarantine until you are cleared by the Department of Public Health. Um, like I'm liable to go outside and the National Guard be standing outside my door telling you get back in there. You know, um, I don't know. I'm I'm just joking. But um, yes, uh, you will be quarantined until the Department of uh, Public Health um, clears you. Um, and you should want to. Um, impact of stigma, I already answered that. Hi, why is it said, why is it the most prevalent? Okay, there, uh, there is zero public messaging at these venues either. I am there almost every weekend. It's inexcusable, even if you can't get someone a vaccine, educate them. This isn't even happening okay yeah um that is true um but we have to realize well let me read that out loud um this is what one person is saying they're saying i'm there almost every weekend um there is zero public messaging at these venues um it's inexcusable even if you can't get someone a vaccine educate them that isn't even happening um well you can't teach people what you don't know you know um and it's obvious that there has not been something uh my thing is where is the leadership on this um you know we have uh you know all these measures that were put in place for COVID 19 or whatever and a lot of them in terms of the social distancing the sanitizing washing your hands there are a lot of them are the same in terms of keeping yourself safe um, um and um away from exposure for monkeypox so they weren't even doing the basic things um at the testing site that I went to for that. Um, so again, if you don't know, you can't teach nobody what you don't know. Um, and that's where I have a problem in terms of the logistics of this whole thing. Um, there hasn't been enough information given to healthcare providers. Um, and you can actually see what information has been given to them um, based off of the CDC's guidelines. But in terms of internal um, education, um, things like how do you get on the list to be tested? You would think that the uh, people who you have to interact with at these particular um, places what have that information um, but they don't it's 11 11 I'm gonna make a wish all right um 
Should anyone with monkeypox ask their provider for treatment with T-pox? You can contact to your uh, your primary care physician or whatever and ask them about T-pox. Um, I don't actually know a lot about um, how it works in terms of getting it just yet because I'm not on it. Um, I will speak with the epidemi epidemi epidemiologist tomorrow um, concerning um, what, is, what are the next steps in order for me to get on that treatment plan. Um, should people recovered from monkeypox get vaccinated? Um, that I don't know yet. Um, they, I have asked that question and what they're saying is they don't have enough information to know, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, if you continue to carry the antibodies, if it makes you uh, immune, um, or if you are still susceptible to, uh, to acquiring or um, to contracting the virus again. So um, I don't know if you don't need the vaccine after you've had it, um, if that becomes your vaccine. Um, but I will definitely get the answer to that once the answer is available. I'll continue to ask these questions as well. Um, how do we get vaccines? Um, I know that A Vision for Hope also is doing vaccines. There is a long list. Um, I've been on the list. I've been on the list at, uh, at the health department as well. Um, and I still have not been called back about an appointment. Um, um, and that's no fault to theirs. Um, it's just that the vaccines right now are scarce. Uh, they depleted pretty much. They pretty much depleted the stockpile. For what I'm understanding, the vaccines are not made here in the U.S., so they're getting more vaccines. Um, I'm hoping that they do like they did with COVID, and they get some of these other uh, agencies or other uh, pharmaceutical companies to go ahead and start um, either replicating. Um, or uh, getting their own versions of the vaccine uh, so that this won't be an issue going forward. Until we get people vaccinated, this shit's going to spread like wildfire or whatever. And that's just the truth of the matter or whatever. So that's why I'm trying to get people you know, up on game as much as possible. Like right now, like, look, don't scratch that stuff. Don't spread it because a lot of people, they think, oh, it's just a hair bump. Oh, it's just a pimple. And you go to scratching them before you know it, they're all over your body, you know. Um, let's try to prevent those, you know, things that are going to cause us to have those emotional and mental, um, breakdowns or whatever. Uh, um, thank you, Antonius, for some of those questions that you gave. Um, I'm saying that there are a lot of people hitting me up saying that they know that they have it. Um, like, it really doesn't make sense for you to go to the doctor. If you can just isolate yourself, um, then to me, I think that's the best thing unless you have some symptoms that you can't control otherwise. Um, do not go to the store, any of that. If you can use Instacart, please do that. Um, I'm not a beggar, but like this stuff getting expensive. Like, I've gone through this is my third box of these bandages just because I'm trying to keep everything clean and fresh and, you know, um, you know, I'm removing them, replacing them, um, food alone. Luckily for me, I cook, um, but just making sure that I have groceries, um, you know, in the house, it's a little burden just not being able to get up and just run to the store real quick and, that, and then having to depend on other people. So doing things like Instacart and um, you know Amazon deliveries and stuff like that, that can be a little hectic. And then, you know, um, I have like my child Josh, a Trinity, you know, um, she's definitely um, been contacting me, asking me to send her my list and all of that stuff. Um, but I'm one of them people, I just go in the store and I, I just go down each aisle. I know the aisles that I normally go down and I see what I need and I get what I need that way. Um, unless there's something specific that I need, I'm not really a list maker. Um, so it's been a, it's been been a little time with me just actually getting the list together. Um, so, uh, but yeah, she's gonna pick up some groceries for me um, to do that. So what I'm probably gonna do is uh, go ahead and place an order um, for pickup at one of the stores. Um, and just have her to pick it up or just like, okay, go in there. I just need a bunch of this fruit. Just give a list of the fruit and veggies and stuff that I eat. Um, 
anything else vegan you want to get, you know, go ahead and get it. Uh, that's that. Um, what else? Any other questions? Um, yeah, I've been on here for a minute or whatever. I hope I answered um, the bulk of the questions that you have as of now. Um, somebody else asking, how does it feel? It feels like you were thrown in a pit of fire ants and they bit you. And if you ever been bit by a fire ant, you know how it itches. Um, and then they become hard and some of them become painful. Um, uh, it feels like a bunch of mosquitoes have gone to town on you. Um, that's another question that I did have. I haven't got a concrete answer to it, but um, be careful because I believe that may be the next thing in being able to be passed through mosquitoes and things like that. A mosquito land on me and bite me, but we don't know if it's going to, you know, I don't know if it's in your blood. I don't know that information. They're still doing tests to figure out where, uh, you know, um, you know, how exactly um, you can contract it or, you know, through what mechanisms like semen, blood, bodily fluids that it can be passed through. Uh, um, another thing is like, uh, for those of you who are off of work, uh, FMLA, if you have been on your job, uh, some, some jobs require that you be on there a year in order to be, um, eligible for FMLA. Um, me, I'm actually not on FMLA right now. I'm actually out on short-term disability. Um, and I'm out on short-term disability because of my accident. So, um, I don't have my full income coming in right now. Um, and while I was out, I was um, initially driving Uber to supplement and to make sure that I was making all of the money that I needed. Um, so as of right now, um, you know, I'm not making all of the money that I was. Um, so that does concern me a little bit, um, just because I'm very independent and I don't like depending on other people to pay my bills and do things for me in that capacity. Um, but I'm going to get creative here. Um, that's the beauty of me being home. I am a creative individual and I'm going to find a way to make me a coin. Um, but I'm not going to use this platform as an opportunity to get rich. If that makes sense. If you'd like to send me something, you know, you're more than welcome to do so. Um, I'm probably just going to turn around and give it right back to somebody else who needs it. Um, I've already done that just in terms of helping some people get up some of the supplies that they need. Like band-aids or bandages and things like that um, we need like a critical crisis um, program or something that you know can kind of facilitate the needs of people who don't have them like everybody can't get FMLA everybody doesn't have short-term disability insurance you know everyone doesn't have a support system or you know the ability to isolate you know so uh, you know everyone doesn't have you know the extra money to you know, order food from Amazon and have it delivered or Walmart and have it delivered, you know. Um, even if they don't have delivery fees, a lot of them have service fees that are associated with them. And those are just extra prices and extra expenditures when we already have inflation to deal with. Um, oh, what else? I think that's about it, y'all. Um, stay safe. Uh, you know, wash your hands, wear your mask. Um, wearing gloves, I mean, it may keep your hands clean, but it's true for you still going to spread the same germs that you were spreading before. So if you wearing gloves and you pick up your cell phone with them gloves that you can touch everything with, now it's on your glove, now it's on your cell phone. So when you take the gloves off and you go to use your cell phone, you're going to contaminate yourself anyways because you're using a cell phone that's been contaminated by the gloves that was contaminated with everything else. So be sensible um, in your approach. Uh, do not walk in fear. Um, God has not given us the spirit of fear. <clears throat> um, um, but use those sound minds, you know, to 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 uh, you know think about the things that you're doing. Uh, you can literally go to a hotel and if they don't clean their sheets properly or they didn't change the sheets and one of their crew members came in and laid on the sheets or something like that before you came and laid on and they had a monkey pop, you know, or a, a pustule, you know, that bed could be contaminated. You could, so you might want to take your own sheets, you know. Um, 
you can't really disinfect you know sheets or towels or things like that with Lysol um, unless you're actually submerging them you know in it you know those are generally for surfaces um, so take your own sheets take your own towels or whatever or do your due diligence just to make sure that it's clean make sure you're staying somewhere that's you know highly recommended that has you know um, a good star rating um, and those things that you that you don't have to worry about when you get there even though the bed may already be made go ahead and request fresh sheets you know um, and even then if that person's handling with their bare hands and they have a pustule on those fresh sheets that they're bringing you you know it still could be contaminated I'm saying that to say this you can get it a multiple number of ways or whatever and a multiple number of ways um, and it's not just you know, it's not a gay disease. Um, it's not just from sexual transmission. Um, even though sexual activities, you know, they, they, they give you skin to skin contact, you know. So it's possible to um, acquire it that way. Uh, I think those are all of the questions that I have for now. I'm gonna look through my feed one more time and check my page just to make sure nobody else um, has asked a question that I have overlooked. Okay. Um, I have some other individuals who have tested positive, some of which who have come out of it um, on the other side. So we're going to get together and we're going to do some lives together uh, just to kind of get some information out there um, about it. Um, I'm sure you all will have more questions moving forward. Um, that's pretty much it. I wish you all peace and blessings. I love you all. Um, I'll put my cash up information in the actual description or in the actual post for this live and I will leave it up. Um, that is the dollar sign Ken Doll Mix, K-E-N-D-O-L-L-M-I-X um, on cash app. Um, Kendall Mix is pretty much my handle for everything else. Um, you know. Hey, that's pretty much it. Um, I love y'all. Like I want us, I, I want us all to be safe. I want, you know, um, this to go ahead and pass, but it's definitely going to spread. Um, and, you know, I'm just hoping that y'all aren't one of the ones that it spreads too. But if it is, it's not the end of the world and there are things that you can do to make your life a lot better. Um, again, if you all have any questions or concerns, please feel free to hit my inbox. Um, you can check my resources page, which is Box the Pox. Like, we, we fighting this thing. We beating Pox ass. We boxing them. Yeah, um, all of that. Boxthepox.com. That'll take you directly to the Facebook page. Um, and then if you're a person who's dealing with it um, and who wants to be in a group of individuals who have experienced it, um, if you're a medical provider and you have information or would like to be a support to these individuals, please hit me up or whatever, and I'll add y'all um, to the group. I haven't made the group active yet. It is. On, but I'm going to add everybody at the same time so that we can start engaging in the conversation. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, again, I love y'all. Y'all be blessed. Uh, peace and blessings to you. Be safe. Uh, and I'll see y'all next time. Again, this is uh, day 11 for me. Getting ready to go into day 12. Um, I will probably come back tomorrow and give y'all some updates if there are any changes um, or after I speak with the epidemiologist. Um, hopefully I'll get some more answers there. All right, y'all. Be blessed. Thank y'all for watching. Thank you for tuning in. Please, again, like, share, and comment so that we can spread awareness for this. There aren't many people who are actually spreading um, the information from a, pos a positive perspective. Um, you know, some people are on. They're just kind of, you know, going in on what's wrong with them or, you know, you know, it's just kind of, you know, them. Again, some people don't have a support system. So social media is their support, and that's what they're on here you know, trying to acquire by going, you know, public with theirs. But I have a good, great support system. My intentions are just to educate, you know, and to promote awareness for this virus that many of us don't know a lot about, but um, we are learning. Um, and as information comes in, I vow to be that voice for you all. Um, don't forget, if you are not registered, please get registered to vote. We have midterm elections that are coming up here soon. Um, I will be posting more information about deadlines to be registered. Um, and the actual date, um, you know, uh, yeah, all of that jazz. Um, again, last time, I love y'all. Peace and blessings to you. Peace.